All right. Very good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's guest lecture on blockchain technology. Many thought that blockchain was identical to Bitcoin, and that is not true. Um, they are two different things. Our guest speaker today, tonight will clarify this, and he is an expert in this area. And we are here learning from him what blockchain really is and how it is used in the area of accounting and finance. Our speaker tonight has a degree in mathematics and also computer science from Beirut University and also a master's degree in management from Undignas University. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest tonight, Igede Putu Rahman Desyanta or Pak Anta. Good evening, Pak Anta. Thank you Good for evening. joining us. Thank you for uh, having me here. So, uh, hello all. Uh, thank you for uh, being here, and um, it's such an honor to explain, to have an opportunity to talk about blockchain. Uh, may I share my screen? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, I think the, my screen is already opening, right? Okay, before we uh, starting the the discussion about blockchain um, for this class, maybe uh, all of you uh, have a question or in the middle of the session you have a question, just raise, raise your hand because uh, it's better that uh, you directly uh, asking me about uh, the topic and uh, we, we will not have a discussion in the end of the session because I'm afraid that maybe there will be we will be forget about what we are uh, talking about. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and let let discuss. Okay. Uh, before we starting the about blockchain, it's uh, maybe like what Paputu said. Uh, maybe most of us know that blockchain is uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin and NFT. Maybe all of you already hear about Bitcoin, NFT, and et cetera, about uh, this technology. And uh, there is some of you uh, already understand what is blockchain, and maybe some of you are still thinking, what is what is the animal of this technology what, of, of, of blockchain? So before we starting, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gede Putra or you can call me Anta. Uh, now I am a CEO and co-founder of Baliola.com. You can see uh, on our website, Baliola.com is uh, NFT marketplace. We started on NFT marketplace, but now we are Web3 and uh, blockchain enabler. Uh, we I'm also a co-founders of Capendo.io, uh, and then currently I'm also a coordinator of Bali Blockchain Center. I'm a vice president of. Uh, sustainability, Entrepreneur Ecosystem, and Digital Society of Gatecraft Bali, and uh, CEO of Nova for System Integration. Like what Pak uh, Putu already said, my uh, bachelor degree, I'm from Binar Santara University uh, in double degree program. So uh, my major is in computer science and applied mathematics. And uh, Master degree I um, uh, have in the Undignas University, then PASA, Master of Management, and my research is blockchain adaptation on real asset or a fraction property investment. You can find my research on Google Scholar or uh, on Google because uh, it's already be on the journal. Okay, so we're starting about before we're talking about blockchain. Let me giving you some. Uh, Glance of the futures about the new technology called Web3. Maybe all of us don't know what what, what is Web3 and what 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 is uh, the correlation between blockchain and Web3. So, as we all know that uh, first the first of the internet. Maybe all of us. Maybe some of you is uh, like uh, born on 90, 1980 era or 1970 era. So if we are born on 1980 or nine, uh, 1980, maybe we, we, we already uh, having 
these three generations, this web one, web two, and now web three. Because this web one is the old technology and the web two is the enhancement of web, web, web one. And then the web three is a new kind of animal. It's, it's different than web two. And the market size of web three in the future, in 2030, it will, it will be 81.5 billion. And you know, the, uh, the research of Web3, the adaptation of Web3 will be focused on Southeast Asia. So we are the focus. And in Southeast Asia, Indonesia is the biggest population company, uh, the biggest population country in Southeast Asia. That's why uh, all of the Southeast Asia say that Indonesia will be the center of development of Web3. So, I was talking about the web one, web two, and three. It's just a glance information for web one. First, maybe you still remember for uh, for you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people here that already that born on 1980. Maybe you still remember when we starting our computer and connecting to the internet with modern the the, the computer trying to make a sound like dee -dee 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 -dee, like that, right? So this is this is a web one era. Why uh, I'm saying the web era is only a read only. Why that happened? Because the transfer of internet, the transfer bandwidth transfers is not as fast as now. Before, it is only like a kilobyte transfer, byte transfer, like one byte per second, what kilobyte per second, 10 kilobyte per second, it's like that. But in enhancement of uh, the internet transfer, the internet bandwidth, uh, people now in the, the second era, people can be interactive. So starting on that, we understand the Frenzer. Maybe some of you know Frenzer, and then going to Facebook, and then uh, YouTube, and then WhatsApp, the chatting. Uh, this is the enhancement when the content is creating from us. So we have a content sharing. But the problem of Web2, when uh, the data is flowing like crazy on the internet, uh, the originality of the data is questionable, and then uh, the uh, the proof and the privacy of our data is we we have still uh, we still question, question questioning how about the data internet our data on internet what is happening so because of this kind of problems then the web tree is happening the web tree is about read write and transferable network so this is based on the decentralized. Uh, engine system that in, is not like in the web too, when we have a digital asset, uh, everybody can have it. But on the web three, when we have a digital asset, we, we can own the digital asset and it's, it's kind of valuable. We can make a value. And the base technology of web three is blockchain. This is what is happening on the world now. So when you're talking about web one to web two, the fundamental technology is not changing. It's, it's a centralized computing. You have a server and then everyone access one server. But on a web tree, the fundamental technology is changing from centralized to decentralized network. So this is what uh, they are talking about um, the movement. And because of this, some of the uh, uh, computer experts still finding out what is the difference between web one and web two and how the blockchain work. So what is blockchain? Uh, maybe some of you still have a question what is blockchain. So it's blockchain is basically uh, how I can put it. It's really easy way. This is the blockchain. It's just a serial series of computers. So you can remember when you now doing a computing or uh, do Facebook, you, you, you understand that your data is on a Facebook server, right? Or you have a Google, Google Drive, or maybe you're using Google Drive and you know that your, your, your data is on Google Drive, right? So on, on blockchain, it's not like that. Your data will be uh, spreading in a lot of server and the server will verify it. Either this is a real, is your organized, it, it this is real or org originally your data or not. The server will doing a consensus and mm, uh, giving uh, what I call it, uh, decision together that this data is proven. It's, it's true, it's one. For example, uh, if you see that the one thing that is a four uh, characteristic of blockchain, uh, 
network. This one is decentralized. It will be putting everywhere. This is what we call a decentralized network. The, two, the second one is the data is immune. What I'm, I'm telling about immune is uh, you cannot change the data. The blockchain never understand the protocol of delete and edit. They only adding and seeing. They only and write only. They don't know how to delete. They don't know how to edit. So when, so when you putting your data on blockchain, it will be there forever. You will, we cannot be changing. But how about if you make a mistake, they will add in a new data. So that's why every single data that's stored on blockchain, they can, we can track everything from the beginning to the end because of, there is no delay on blockchain. The third one, the provenance, like what I said before, it will be tracking from the, the first one until, until now. This is, and the last one is consensus. The consensus is about how we prove this data is original. The, the algorithms that we, uh, that the network or the blockchain uh, used for defining this is originally and it is approved to be in the network. So this is a blockchain. So if I can, uh, you know, blockchain basically we on in, in Bali, if you are a Balinese and you know Desa Adat, right? Okay, you can imagine blockchain is just like this other. It's same like that. Okay, so for a long time ago, when, when there was this ancient, uh, there is no like uh, computer, no ledgers, no, no everything. When you have, for example, that I have a brother and I have a, a land in my house, right? And I want to spare it the land. One is for my brother, one is for me. Half for my brother, one half for me. So I do it, I call all of, Banjar and this other right and we sitting together uh, discussion all of them together and I say on the forum that okay I, I, I want to separate my land in the right side is my brother the left side is me so all of the the Banjar people say okay we agree and they record it in themselves so this is how blockchain works so every single transaction, it will be, it's not like one person will be uh, the, the middleman to doing the transaction. No, like, like bank or maybe for example, that I want to trend, uh, doing the transaction with Pak Putu. Maybe like uh, Pak Putu, I, I want to buy a Pak Putu laptop, right? For like 20 million rupiah. And then uh, the one thing is happening here is we need a middleman to transaction, to do each transaction to set up to transferring my, my money to Baputu. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of money, 20 million rupiah is quite a lot of money to bring in cash and everything, right? So we need a middleman. But in blockchain, when, when I have a transaction like this, when I buy a Baputu laptop, I will call you guys all, like here, like in the class. Okay, all of you guys, uh, I wanna buy Baputu laptop okay, for 20 million rupiah, okay. Please uh, make a calculation or make a, a note on your ledger, and then uh, what what time and how how much it will be and everything. Just just like that, and then each of you uh, write out down on your ledger. So this is called the decentralized. Every single people, every single people on the network on the group is making a note on the ledgers. Okay, so the one thing about consensus, okay. when, 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 when I be uh, having a transaction with Baputu, maybe on our network, we have uh, a law. We have a law. If we have a transaction, if Baputu and I have a transaction, we need to bring a red map envelope, red envelope. So I don't have red envelope. So I say to, to you guys all, okay, I don't have a red envelope. So all of you, each of you will go everywhere to find a red envelope for me. So maybe uh, one guy go to uh, Indomart, go to Nadi Mart, go to Gramedia, to go everywhere. And then one guy coming and say, okay, pa, pa Anta, this is a red envelope. I have it. It's for you, for the transaction. Okay, I take the envelope and I give money to this guy who 
uh, used to buy me a hand plug. I said it, okay, for your hard working, I will uh, give you the money. And then I used this hand plug to uh, do the transaction on this network. This process, finding the envelope and uh, giving the envelope to, for the transaction people, it call it mining. This is what they call it blockchain mining. Basically, just finding out the code and the finding out the envelope so we can do the transaction. And for the miners, I, as a people who will do the transaction, I'm giving a gas fee to people who find the code. So this is how the blockchain works. The consensus always works like that. So because of this consensus, because of this transaction and methods, it's really impossible to, uh, it's, it's nearly impossible to hack the system or manipulate the system because once the, the blockchain, the data is go there, no one can manipulate it. That's why until now there's no news about blockchain getting hacked. They are getting hacked because the private key is opening, but the, net, the data is on the blockchain, it's never been hacked until now. So blockchain is really giving a lot of solution for data protection, uh, data originality, because blockchain giving a fingerprint for the data, because sometimes that we don't know, is it a real, a real data? Is it originally data from Paputu or not? We don't know. Sometimes in the middle of the transaction we have in Paputu, there is someone who will be tapping in the middle and manipulate the data. This is, uh, it, is, it often happen on finance. That's why they have a lot of infrastructure, right? But on blockchain, it will be easy to protect the data like that. So on blockchain, there is a lot of uh, kind of blockchain. There is a four kind of blockchain. First is public blockchain. So if you know public blockchain, I think you already know like Bitcoin, this is public blockchain. Ethereum, this is public blockchain. Everyone can use the blockchain. It's open network, it's free access. It's no permission. Everybody can be node. Everybody can be the server. So you can be the server of, of Ethereum, absolutely. But you need, you need to stack some Ethereum to be a server. And then if you want to be a server for Bitcoin, you need to having a great computational because you ha have to, to be a miner for Bitcoin, just like that. So this is a public blockchain. There is a lot of public blockchain. There is about 500 or 600 blockchain, public blockchain in the world now. It's quite a lot and it's, 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 de it's, it's developing a lot and because of the adaptation of blockchain is really massive these four years. Uh, the, the development of blockchain, the new blockchain is happening every single week. And then a private blockchain. Private blockchain is not like public blockchain. Everybody who own the private blockchain will use the system or the blockchain in their organization. For example, if you have an office and you don't want to, I mean, your, 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 your data is really, it's really a sensitive, you don't want to put it on public blockchain, you can create your own private blockchain. The uh, bank, uh, the, the commercial bank like BN, BNI, uh, BCI, they, 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 they already trying to starting to using a private blockchain to protect the transaction on, on their system. So, and even with us, uh, we also helping Denpasar City now to creating a private blockchain for uh, for data on Denpasar City. There is a federated blockchain. Federated blockchain is just like uh, the blockchain that it's 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 been a blockchain with blockchain. So every single node they have their own uh, blockchain mechanisms. But to going on the main node, they have a, another. Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, mechanisms also. So this is like blockchain on blockchain, like that. And then the hybrid, uh, hybrid blockchain is, this is the blockchain that half is uh, public, but half is private, just like that. So this is uh, what we call it, uh, there is a four, four kind of blockchain, and sometimes we can use this a public blockchain, it's, it depends on the case. For me, on, block, uh, on, on Baliwala, we, we also have giving a consultancy to a client. Uh, for example, in Jakarta, in, uh, in, in Al Jazeera, and also in Singapore, we're giving a consultation to uh, the client about which blockchain is, is, is proper for, for their case. So it's based on their case. There is no such thing like uh, a formula to which one is for, for, for every single industry node. This is basically, it's based on the case. 
and how it works like this. Uh, so like what I'm saying before, the, how it how it works. First, there is someone is uh, offering. Uh, there is a transaction is happening, and then the second one, the transaction is uh, forming like a block. You know, so this is not like a database. If you is, maybe some of you maybe understand the database is basically like Excel. You know, the Excel there is a column, table, row, uh, uh, rows, right? On blockchain, it's not looks like that. It looks like a block. It's definitely a block because I saw the code, I saw the the visualization. It's all on the block. With the block, there is a head and a tail. Every single head will be connected with before that uh, the block before in the tail and the tail of this data will be connected to the next that uh, have data so this is like they are uh you being a chain you know and if you want to change in the middle you need to change the, uh, the data before and after because of and if you change this one you will change this one it, it's, it's it's going that like that forever that's why it's really difficult to change the data on blockchain because you need to change all the data on the network imagine that you have like 1000 network like blocks like ethereum they have a thousand a node server and a lot of block if you want to hack it and manipulate it you need like yeah, roughly like 10 years for only changing one data on blockchain it's really difficult and then after you represent a block and you put on the network say that i want to put a block so please uh please allow me to put a block on the blockchain and then they doing the consensus validate say validate the transaction is it the reason is real is it the reason is using the consensus or not and then if it's is it okay you put it on the block which one the block it will be connected and then done the transaction is happening so basically you don't need to understand this one it is it is the concept of how it's it's blocked but uh the the one thing that you need to understand every single blockchain needs to be to be validated every every single data on blockchain needs to be validated so it's really need to be verified and the benefit of the blockchain the first is efficiency with blockchain we don't need middlemen we don't need bank to do transaction we don't need uh notary to do uh like approving this uh the contract every single time and it's run for us everybody can see everything but still still secure why like that because they're using cryptography you know uh when you have a transaction on blockchain you will have a transaction hash so we we know that if someone doing transaction for example i sending that uh, sending money to paputu everybody know uh, i i know that i sending a money to paputu but everybody know that there is happening an activity is happening from my wallet to Paputu wallet, but the wallet is not on the name of us. It's on cryptography, so everybody don't know. They need to track it down uh, to find out which, which which wallet is it, like that. But it's opening, everyone can see it. The, there is network distribution, Every everybody can do it. It's dis distributed, even though that one, one server is down, another server is still up, and when the server down go up again, they synchronize one and another that's why it's so secure and then traceability we can trace everything happening on the blockchain we can reduce the cost because for sending money from outside from 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 germany to indonesia we will spend like 20 uh, 20 percent it will be cost 20 percent 10 and 20 percent but on blockchain you only need like 2.5 percent 1.5 or 2.5 percent at its due we can do it from transaction only in one minute Okay, and then availability because this is a decentralized every single node is happening there is consensus every single time the server is available and then because we are using blockchain as i will i will discuss with you about smart contract there is will be automation you don't need to think if something happened with your server because your server is handling by a lot of people that's why it's it's be optimized and it's decentralized and we can create the tokenization or token economy for every single case. Uh, I will talk about token economy after this. So, okay, the token. Okay, maybe you know about NFT, right? And cryptocurrency. Yeah, basically, uh, I wanna know, do you know what is, what is token? 
what is the, the definition of that? Maybe uh, if you have, uh, you can raise your hand if you want to answer my question. What is token? I want to know the definition of token. What do you know? Because uh, uh, we we live with a lot of token. You know, like like electric token, token PLN. You know, token listed. There is a lot of token happening. Basically, what what is token? Does some of you want to give uh, oh, what want to give opinion about uh, token? What is token? You can raise your hand, please. Yeah, it could be many things, but Anta, it could be, um, you know, like a, a voucher or it could be a symbolic action, right? Uh, it could be in interpreted in many ways. It depends on the context. Um, like you say, token listing, that means um, a voucher that you need to, you know, I don't know, you need to pay and then you insert that and then you can, you know, enjoy that, you know, power or electric uh, things and uh, devices and so on. Or it could be like tokenism. It can be interpreted like it's a symbolic action to make you know uh, everybody's happy, something like that. Uh, that's my opinion. So, so what do you think, Baanta? <laughs> so, what what is actually NFT with token in that um, you know abbreviation? Okay, token token basically what you say is is right. It's a spot on. But uh, I will giving a definition about token. Token is something that represents an asset or a privilege. Okay, so for example, like token listing. Do, do we buy the, the listing? No. We buy the kilowatt. The kilowatt is over there on PLN, it's still there. And we buy the, the token to get the token number because we need to redeem it. And because this token number is represent the asset that we already buy, the kilowatt on the bell end, and then we put it. Our life is full of token. For example, our money is token. You, maybe, yeah, because of all of you is um, on accounting, I think you already understand about the, the difference between money and bank note, right? Well, money and bank note is three different things. Yeah, and I owe you is the bank note, right? So this is basically a token that represent our wealthiness, our money that held by Bank Indonesia, right? So this is token also. Our KTP, it's also a token. It represents our right in this country, our ID in this country. So this is what we call token. So on, on blockchain, on crypto, there is two kinds of token based on the transferability of the token. One is non-fungible token or NFT, or the second one is cryptocurrency or FT, fungible token. Fungible token is token that can be transaction, can be transfers, can be changing, because every single token is the same. For example, in our real life, our money, rupiah, is fungible token. Because if you have a uh, 50 mil uh, 50000 rupiah i have 50000 rupiah uh, do you mind to change it i mean we can barter it right it's okay right because the 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 the, the value is the same this is fungible token it can be transferred it can be changing from one token to another token on crypto we call it cryptocurrency like for example you have two bitcoin i have two bitcoin we can change it you have three Bitcoin, you have uh, amount of same amount of Ethereum and Bitcoin, we can change it because they have the same meaning. There is an asset, there is, they have the same meaning, the fungible token. But non-fungible token is the token that cannot be exchanged, cannot be bartered. It only can be transactional. It cannot be bartered. For example, NFT on our real life is our KTP. KTP is our NFT. For example, uh, some of you, do you want to change the your KTP to me? To my KTP? I don't think so. Because why? The KTP have a power when you own it, when you hold it. If I hold your KTP, I will go to jail because it's a fraud. 
right? So the KTP will not have a value when, 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 uh, if we exchange it with another one, because they have their own intrinsic level. This why that this is why NFT they using it for the first time for what for copyright for art because art is just like this. But is it NFT is art? No, NFT is not only an art. NFT is basically NFT is a smart contract. So NFT, FT, all of them is smart contract. And what is smart contract? Okay, if we, we we're talking about uh, okay, if 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 I talking about blockchain, we were talking about technical. Everything is about technical. How we code it, how the consensus, how to what is the language of uh, you know the programming language, and I don't I don't think that most of us understand this. So, if we're talking about how we implement blockchain on our business, for example, if you are on a tax office, how we implement blockchain to controlling tax on how we implement blockchain on uh, forwarder or 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 we how we doing uh, how we use blockchain on on logistics everything is based on smart contract to recording the data the recording the data to blockchain we need smart contract it's a final one what is smart contract it's a protocol it's a protocol to putting your data to blockchain. This is a smart contract. And this smart contract, they have a lot of protocol. For example, if, you, if we're talking about NFT, there's two protocol of NFT to create NFT, 1155 and 721. This is two protocol of NFT. For cryptocurrency, only one, there is ERC20. This is the protocol of cryptocurrency. So this is what we call smart contract. And smart contract is law. So if we're talking to you the smart contract if on blockchain, smart contract is the law, how we put the data on the blockchain. And this smart contract is simply programmed. It's just, it, it, it's just a bunch of code, a bunch of code that can run automatically and automatically use automate the execution and agreement, everything in there doing it automatically so it's just like what do you call it a robot a robot that focus on uh follow the procedure that you put in on the smart contract okay I, I will explain it again smart contract is a bunch of code that explain every single procedure you want to put on blockchain and this procedure will be running without administrator you don't need a human to run a smart contract. You just call smart contract and then the smart contract will run itself. Because it's put on blockchain, the smart contract cannot be manipulated. Once you put the smart contract, mean the smart contract, everything is happened in the smart contract will, will run automatically. This is what is the powerful of blockchain. For, I'm starting to research blockchain on 2018. And then I just find out that the power of blockchain is not the blockchain itself, it's the smart contract. If you're talking about the implementation, it's smart contract. For example, how the smart contract, first, smart contract is self-verifying. They do the verification by themselves. They enforce the procedure. You cannot be like bribing the smart contract. You cannot do that because smart contract is just a code. They don't have a mind. They just follow the procedure that they put. And because it's on the blockchain, it's immutable. You cannot change it. You cannot edit it. Even though that you are dead and maybe your company is bankrupt, the smart contract is still running. This is the, the, the beauty of smart contract. Because of the magical of smart contract, Bitcoin is happening. You know, Bitcoin, they, they, they don't have a management. They don't have a CEO. Do, do you know the CEO of, of, of Bitcoin? Who? Satoshi Nakamoto? No, it's, he is not the CEO. He's just someone or some organization that creating the white paper, creating the network. But did blockchain have a CEO? No. Do they have, have a, a CFO, finance? No. Do they have a, a HR department or CTO or technology? No, they don't have it. 
everything is run by the code. That's why Bitcoin is the first DAO or decentralized autonomous organization. A decentralized organization that run automatically without people. This is Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin change, saying everything is already on the smart contract and the smart contract is running smoothly on Bitcoin. Because of this uniqueness, that's why Bitcoin is the only decentralized token in the world. Because of this. Yeah. So Bitcoin is really amazing. That's why uh, on blockchain, on, on crypto, there will be uh, three coins. There is Bitcoin, alternate, alternate coin, and stable coin. And another one is mem coin. There's only four. Bitcoin is only one kind. There's no other kind than Bitcoin. This is the beauty of smart contract. So if we see that the smart contract is happening like this, for example, if uh, I would not have a transaction, transaction, how it the smart contract work? For example, that I have a transaction with Paputu. Every single time I transfer my money to Paputu, 20% will go to Rafael. 20% will go to Rafael. This is, we, we already agree upon, and then we put it on smart contract. And then when the smart contract there, when I do the transfer to Paputu, boom, 100 million rupiah. And then 20% will go to Rafael automatically. I don't need you to, to, to like, um, you know, like doing the splitting and everything, the smart contract do it. And then one clause on the smart contract, they said, if there is Christmas, the transaction that I do to Pak Putu, no need to transfer to Rafa. And then when the Christmas, I send the money to Pak Putu, like 5 million rupiah, none will go to Rafa. This is how smart contract work. We call them, when we call the smart contract, we do the transaction and then the smart contract find out this is, is this transaction uh, trigger some uh, issue or action? Oh yes, okay, execute the action. If not, okay, don't do it. They do like that. It is just a bunch of if, of, if like that, this simple code like that, but it's really expensive. You know, how much money you need to create a smart contract from blockchain de developers? For NFT, it's like 20 and 30 million rupiah. And the blockchain and the, the developers of blockchain, every single month, they had 120 million rupiah. The salary, it's really expensive because there's only one, 1,500 people who can do this. It's really rare. Uh, luckily, we have seven blockchain developers on Valiola. So, because of we, we already understand that how blockchain works and how NFT works. And I see the NFT is the uniqueness and this the core of blockchain because the smart contract or NFT is really unique. And the implementation of NFT is not only for, for the pictures, it's for everything. We can do it everything. That's why I say NFT of everything. This is the term that we explain uh, to the world. This is a concept that we uh, publish from Baliola, we call it NFT of everything. We do NFTs not only for the artwork, we do NFT for property. Like in my thesis, I, uh, I fractionize the house in a small NFT called Bata. So this is how it works. And we can do it NFT for logistics. We can do NFT for content creation, uh, for copyright, for maybe for law, a lot of things. So this is the bit, the, the point of NFT. So for, for example, what uh, I will share what we are doing, how we do blockchain on how we implement blockchain based on NFT smart contract. For example, this one, we are creating uh, an NFT Warna Warni. This is a social trainer implementation on blockchain. We are using blockchain to uh, gathering money, gathering funds. Uh, it's based on the book that wrote by Sally Mantra. And in five days, it sold out, and we got 50 million rupiah money, only five days. And then most of them is, is non-crypto user. 
So they, 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 because of this one, they understand that blockchain is, NFT is not only about trading. We can do a uh, social planner, gathering funds, because when you buy the NFT, you binding yourself to the contract that already in the NFT. If you buy the contract is called like this, the contract is every single NFT is binding to the real book. When you have that, you have the book, then you can redeem the book and you got the physical book. It's like that. This is for the NFT 101. The, la the second one is NFT for ticketing. It's for even. So NFT, we can use it to a uh, ticket. You know, before, maybe now you have a digital ticket, right? And then you, uh, before we have a concert, we have a ticket of Metallica or Michael, uh, you know, for, for another ticket like that and we collection, make a collection. So on the NFT, we can create the same thing. And every single smart contract, we can put like uh, the seat number, uh, the, the level of the N NFT. When you buy the ticket, it means that you're binding with the law inside. You know, every single ticket, is it's, there is procedure inside. This is VIP ticket, there is a regular ticket, right? So we put it on smart contract and we do it two time even in uh, Dharma Negara Alaya using NFT ticket. See, and then another one is we're using NFT for membership. This is the first step for, for business, like for example, like coffee shop, uh, and then like uh, a coffee shop restaurant, though, so they can go to Web3 business. So we're creating NFT for membership. It's same like before. Every single procedure on the membership, we put it on smart contract and we create NFT asset based on the smart contract. And we also have a value.io, the smart contract generator. So you don't need to understand how to code smart contract. You just go to value.io and then create the smart contract by your own. You, you're just putting what property you want to put on uh, the uh, smart contract itself. So we already creating this and uh, we now have uh, creating like for the project already that using our engine. Another one is, this is the sweetest NFT ever. Why I say that? Because it is NFT for chocolate. So we have a collaboration between a chocolate capital and then uh, five artists, Balinese artists. We are creating NFT. When you buy the NFT, you will get, uh, uh, you get one chocolate tree. And this chocolate tree will be managed by the farmer. And 30% from this chocolate tree, that uh, the result of the chocolate tree, the, the selling of every single bin on the chocolate tree will go to you. It's an investment, basically. And then you get the discount, 10% discount, you get everything, and it's already sold like 131 NFT for the first one. We're still selling it. It's one NFT is only like one, 1 1.5 million rupiah. So this is we're doing, we're helping farmer using NFT. Another one is we also on a B20 or G20, we are combining uh, augmented reality, virtual guide uh, with NFTs, with STEM. So we are combining uh, the augmented reality for virtual guide so people can come to the, the temple. We, we just put it on Pura Sakenan, Sakenan temple. It's still there. If you want to go there, you can see there's a four spot. Uh, the QR spot, you don't need special application, just your um, mobile phone and your camera, and then you scan it, you will get uh, augmented realities pop up to your screen, and uh, this beautiful girl will uh, explain to you what is the spot about. There is four spot, there is in a main gate, in the C gate, in the uh, gate of Pura Dalam Sakenan, and the gate of Pura Samwanagu. So you can see everything there, and then after that, we are trying to developing the NFTs. So when you scan that, you will get NFTs. And your, this NFT, you can do, you can get discount for every single uh, local coffee shop, or you can get merchandise. So we're trying to collaborate the artists, uh, the temple, the tourism, the government, and also the business, a local business in Bali using Web3 technology. So, and not, also, not only that, uh, in Baliola.com, our NFT marketplace, we are, it's not like another marketplace, NFT marketplace, other NFT marketplace. Our marketplace focused on protecting the copyright 
and we are complying with the uh, copyright law for uh, from the Directorate General of uh, Intellectual Property. Now uh, we are being still in on discussion how we can integrate when the artists creating NFT on Baliola.com, they will automatically generate the certificate of uh, intellectual property or the copyright. So we are we we seeing that how NFT we 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 creating the the model of NFT to protecting the copyright. We still developing it, but it's it's kind of good now. It's already one hundred sixty seven artists is already uh, registered in us, and there is three hundred uh, artwork is already registered on us. So we. We are trying to implement blockchain, not only about, about cryptocurrency trading, no, but we implement it to real cases and trying to helping uh, the people to uh, implement, to having uh, experience about blockchain. Now, how about on finance? How blockchain will help? So this is maybe you have a question in yourself, like, okay, blockchain good. Okay, blockchain is like this, but I'm on finance. How blockchain support me on finance? And it's about accounting. So well, I, I want to ask you guys, what is at the core of accounting? It's a provenance. It's a recording transactions. Transaction, recording transaction, right? How yeah. about if the transaction is invalid, someone or organization putting a wrong number in the beginning of the month, in the beginning of the month, in the first year, in, in the beginning of the year, and then you just find out in the end of the year, what will happen? It's a big audit, right? Yeah, blockchain can help that. So on blockchain, for example, for tax, you know, uh, on, on March, uh, on uh, 20, 2018, I am the one member of uh, consultant that focus on audit the system of uh, PB1 tax in Guyana. The problem of PB1 is the implementation and the law is different. This is what I'm, I'm sensing. In the law, this is the tax of PB1 is basically come from us and put it to the restaurant and the restaurant will give it to the tax office, right? But the problem is, how I know that the restaurant will give it to the tax office? And this is a lot of fraud, a lot of uh, pollution, corruption, and everything like that. It's not from the uh, tax office, no. It's because of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the technicality is, 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 is it's not good enough. So with Blockchain with smart contract, we can do auto split bill directly using only smart contract. So there is no way every single restaurant will manipulate the data of PB1. You can't do that. There is one thing. The second thing is the tax, the enforcement of the tax. We can do like we can create like a smart contract that binding on our KTP, if there's something happening on the tax, the KTP, the smart contract will be activated. When the smart contract is activated, the KTP will be hit on. And then the enforcement is happening without people to do that. And there is no manipulation. This is how blockchain will be helped. The second one for bank, for bank, maybe you are working in bank or in, in insurance, you know, credit approval. This is still have a problem now. Credit approval, sometimes we don't know the, the scoring and everything. And sometimes it's how about if the bank doing a fraud of credit? Last uh, this year, there is two BPR that the license it got cut off because of this kind of thing. So with blockchain, we can create like a digital signatures. Every single transaction needs to be put on blockchain. Then it's, you cannot be manipulated. It's protected, it's run with the system and the approval can be instant, just like that. So you, you don't need to uh, like 
doing survey so many times, uh, finding out, no, everything is already confirmed and it's on the decentralized network. The third one is about ban also. You know the problem of BPR now because of the COVID? Lack of liquidity. There's no people money, put the money, deposito or a lot of money on the bank now. They put it on their cash. That's why we have inflation, right? Even though the uh, uh, BI already, the central bank already giving, uh, rising the, the interest, no one put their money on deposito. Why? Because they need cash. Right? So liquidity provider, we can helping each other. Koperasi, you know LPD? LPD is the biggest and the powerful finance institution in Bali. They have a lot of money. They put all of our money there. And the second one, the powerful is BPR. Sorry, the second one is Koperasi, the third one is BPR. Then the fourth one is BPD. So the first one, if we can doing like uh, using a blockchain to giving a liquidity for every single bank without uh, forcing a law, it will be helping a lot of BPR. I, I, we, 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 we already have the model of it, but the problem is the regulation is not for And then the, the full one is fund guarantee. For example, if you are a forwarder, and then sometimes, okay, if, if you want to import something from outside, right? You, you have a problem with bank guarantee, right? You was finding bank guarantee and then uh, for buyer bank guarantee and then the seller bank guarantee, how is it? It's taking a long time. It's like two weeks or until a month, right? But on blockchain, we can put it on a smart contract. So how it works? For example, I want to, I, I am in, in, in Japan. I want to import, uh, I want to import uh, rice from Paputu in Bali. So I said that Paputu, I need four ton of rice. Okay, the price is, for example, the price is like uh, 20 million uh, rupiah or $20,000 like that. Okay, the one thing is problem is why we need bank guarantee is Paputu need to be guaranteed. When I sending the rice, they can pay me. And I only need a guarantee also that when I put the money, the rice, I get the rice, right? So this is why we need bank guarantee. We need a middleman to do that. But with blockchain, we only need smart contract. We can change the $10,000 to be 10,000 USDT. This is a stable coin. We put it, we put it on smart contract. So the money is already in the smart contract. It's not on us anymore. The money is, it's not on in, in me. The money is on the smart contract. And in that smart contract, we're making a payment term. When you, uh, when the quotation is approved, you get 20%. And if the delivery note is put, you get 50%, just like that. And then after all the rice is coming to me, I say that, okay, execute, the fund is there. So this is just giving like a, a guarantee. For Paputu, $10,000 is already there. He see the money, even though that he cannot track the money, but he see the money. The money is on a smart contract. For me, I, I have a guarantee that if Paputu don't do the term, the money will back to me. So this is how it works. Smart contract will happen you with the fund guarantee like this. And then about immune ledger system, because of all of the data, if we make, you know, putting the data on uh, ledgers and then put it on blockchain, every single data is immune. You cannot be manipulate this. You cannot be changing it. It's you just say bye to hacker. Hacker can do cannot change it. Everything. So this is how blockchain will help him. And there's a lot of another for insurance. Maybe for claiming the insurance, you can do on blockchain. You can. You don't need to create a company for insurance. You can create a crowd insurance. This is new on blockchain also. And then about the crowdfunding, the crowdfunding, we you then need to create a crowdfunding. You can create crowd asset. It's not crowdfunding. So, and then a lot of things. Blockchain can creating a new business model of finance and also helping to protect and make the efficiency of the current business model of finance now. Yeah, okay. very interesting, Panda. I think um, not only about these 
five things, uh, you know, in the area of finance. I think um, in our daily, in, in our, you know, day life, like Arisan pa, pa anta, you know, yes. uh, uh, you know, like a social gathering with family and, and relatives, you know, uh, we, we usually need a middleman as our bendahara, you know, uh, somebody who, you know, records money in, money out. But with the blockchain technology, you know, um, you know, it is becoming decentralized. So the man, so everybody as the member of that group will be able to trace and monitor where the money goes, you know, money in, money out. Is that, is that the idea of the blockchain in terms of, you know, verifying, you know, the transactions, the, the flow of information? Is that right, Pak Anta? So Arisan can be, you know, get benefit from, from the blockchain technology. Basically, Arisan is the fundamental of DAO right. and DeFi. Right, okay. <laughs> so there is a DeFi, decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. What we are talking here is about decentralized finance, where yeah. everybody don't need a bank to do the transaction, to right. lending, to uh, crowdfunding, to insurance. They don't need the middleman mm -hmm. to do that. And there is DAO. DAO, decentralized autonomous organization, can, it, it can be same like Arisan. Everyone can have a voting and then they do a randomly checking and then they just approving. They put the money there and it's like representing the asset, the real asset, just like that. And finally speaking, the Arisan like this is really, really popular on, in America and Australia, Singapore using blockchain. They are using DAO basically, and they are getting a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money, really. They are like, there is one DAO that I understand they are rising for like three hundred million dollars, three hundred million dollars in two days, only for Arisan. It's like that. So this is, obviously, it's up to us how we can implement the te technology. In another case that blockchain will have, there is a lot of things also blockchain can help. For example, coffee supply chain. We don't know this is a real coffee, this is a provenance, uh, this is approved, the quality of the coffee. You know, the problem that we have now in our supply chain is the quality of the product and also the time, the efficiency of chain on the supply chain is we have, a, we still have a problem with that. Uh, and then in, in real estate, in real estate, we can create another fun alternative to helping our millennials to having house or using blockchain to do like a uh, transaction for the house, for example, like renting the house and everything like that. And then on organizational structure, for example, that you want to create, you have a organization that you want to, don't, you, you already have a SOP procedure, right? And then you want to put this procedure is no need to thinking. We just, we just can run it. Don't need, don't need uh, one people to control this one because one people we need to pay the, the, the salary, right? Just wipe it, change it with smart contract. And then we, we have efficiency there. And then carbon credit, whoa, carbon credit, it's, it's the future of blockchain. Blockchain will be helping a lot with carbon credit and carbon offset. There is a lot of things we're helping with, with blockchain and federal government operation in government blockchain can be having for the memo for our medical record. Uh, a lot of things, our identity, identity on pharmacy, pharmacy also need blockchain on voting. Also, we can do blockchain in there is a lot of blockchain use case that can be, you can use because blockchain is just like a tools. Blockchain is a tools. So it's just like a knife. If we uh, use knife for cutting vegetables, we have a chap chai. It is delicious, right? But if we have a knife, but we use it to hurt people, yeah, you, you, it's 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 bad for us and the society, right? So this is why we are pushing to introducing blockchain to every single people. They say that blockchain is not the same as cryptocurrency because. I, we 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 don't want that government so allergic with the technology. Then basically they just ban the technology, because this technology giving a lot of uh, solution for a lot of problems that we have. So 
For example, here, you know, Bank Indonesia recently launching the Garuda project. Garuda project is a project to creating central bank of digital currency for creating digital rupiah. Yes, digital rupiah will use blockchain. This why that is this why all of the people, the blockchain community, is so crazy about Indonesia because Indonesia already de declared that we will have digital rupiah in based on blockchain. You know this this is change the 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 course of this technology, the era. You know. In, if you want to learn about blockchain, you don't need to go everywhere. You don't need to go to America. You don't need to go to, to Singapore. You don't need to go to uh, maybe like Australia. Because the central of blockchain development is Bali. I mean, I really say it's Bali. It's really a Bali. There is a lot of community, global community is, is working here, even though the company is uh, licensed or uh, registered on Bahamas, America, US, or in Australia and Singapore. But the worker, the CEO, the investors and everything, it's in Bali. Where is it? In Canggu, Ubud, Kuta, uh, Nusa Dua, Seminya, most of them. So if you go there, there is every single week, there is a blockchain community gathering happening. And we are one of the community there. Are they called? Sorry, sorry. Are they called the digital nomad? That that I always heard that digital yeah. nomad. The community, they are right? They digital nomad, and they right. li li uh, they live about uh, they live with crypto. You see, this is it is really different. In Changu, like a Russian, there they don't use fiat money. They don't use like physically money. They use crypto. Their life. This is how it works. So because of this, because of blockchain is the uh, central bank already said blockchain will be the work, which are digital rupiah will be blockchain. It's crazy. Indonesia in a right step. So prepare, man. There is a lot of thing will happening of this. Uh, this is this is very, really interesting. Um, before you move on to your next slide, um, you, you mentioned about the medical records that, you know, it's really important for not only for the government, but also for us. Like a few months ago, I went to a clinic in, in Denpasar, you know, um, I need to, I need, I needed to tell my, my doctor about my, my, you know, historical, you know, information about my, my, my health, you know, uh, but then, uh, a few days ago, I went to a, a doctor in, in Singaraja and then I need to tell again about about my health situation you know about the track record and and you know the the past information so i imagine that if you know um medical records whatever you call it um is managed under the you know black blockchain technology then you know my medical record should be should be able to be shared right so so i can if, if i go to to anywhere then i don't need to tell the doctor about what happened in the past about my my my, my health right um so they they can just like um you know retrieve the information from the system so they just need to check further not by asking what what have been happening in the past about my historical you know health record something like that so yeah so um from your from your presentation it seems like um you know blockchain is mostly used in finance area uh in in the sense that it can enhance the transparency because of you know the information is verifiable uh, it is immutable it cannot be easily it cannot be totally you know uh, change something like that so it is it it, 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 it enhances the transparency of information finance information but i think uh, you should also highlight that non financial area can also get benefit from from the blockchain for example the medical records but uh what i'm worrying is you know uh, you know you know unethical 
behavior of anyone uh, may use that information for for you know for for crime whatever i'm not sure if, so my question is what do you think that blockchain has also disadvantages so far other than all the good things that you you talk about like in, increase the transparency uh, verifiable uh, verifiability and and, and and many things it, 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 can you tell us like what are the potential disadvantages of 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 this technology thank okay. you for that yeah yeah uh for the disadvantage of the technology we can see that there is a lot of their dimension here first is the technical dimension blockchain is still uh the question about blockchain is the scalability scalability and integration between each blockchain this is still uh still need to be enhanced this is the down down downgrade of blockchain but in another dimension about implementation, the problem is this technology is so powerful. That's why some of the people creating asset and then gathering fun and then they go away just like that using this technology as their bumpers. So the problem of the implementation is the good conduct. That's why we are now on Bali Blockchain Center. We are creating Indonesian blockchain conduct. Why? We need to we we need to helping people to understand how to creating a good in this blockchain industry how to implement it what yes what do what do and what don't in this this, this technology because if we if, if we don't do this and everyone just using you know that a lot of people can making a fraud for example they're creating cryptocurrency and then selling it and then without an underlying set or underlying project they just uh, get fun for example like 100 billion rupiah and then they go away so a lot of people will be sad and it will be so useless you know uh, because of this thing this is the bad thing about a blockchain that's why uh, we need to having a great conduct for implementing this technology because this technology is really powerful that's why like uh, for example like by indonesia now is is giving a digital rupiah so people don't create their own stable coin of rupiah you know this is the problem that will be happening. That's why um, by Indonesia creating digital rupiah. So about what you're saying, the medical record, yeah, it's really helping. For example, in now we are currently on research with one of the biggest uh, software developers for campus discussing how to implement blockchain on the campus management. You know, and we already find the formula and we really have find the models and uh, it will be happening for next three years. It's it's starting in next year, we'll be starting in the first step. There is one step uh, and then the second year, the second step how to changing the SKS and also the models will be SKS is one token, model is one token and then we're creating it. And then the third one is how we will uh, do one economic model that despite of the university students spending money to have a degree they are get money so they are spending in the front and the, the government the the campus will get more money but the student also get their money back this is how we are still discussion about the economic model that we can do that because it's possible we already try it and it's done it's called learn to earn when you learn and your gpa is four like maybe your gpa is four you will get a lot of funding but if your gpa is under 2.5 okay don't think that your money will go back <laughs> this is like a motivation for people who really uh want to uh learn a lot about what they are doing in the university they will get benefit so this is what we, we are trying to do in the third year. So next year will be the first year we focus on the personality data. The second year we will focus on the SKS and to dig the reporting. And the last one is for economic model. So blockchain can use everything, Pablo. Yeah, guys, yeah. Blockchain is, yeah. I will say that because I'm a geek and I'm so passionate about blockchain, I would say that blockchain is rule, you know, buzzer is rock like that. So this is, 
we the, the one thing that we need is how we implement it how we can create a, a creative business model to implement this technology and helping a lot of people you know you know that now is the beers of uh crypto right the crypto is going down everything you know what i say this is this is uh the new wave will coming the new project will coming the new pro blockchain project will coming that with a great utility a good conduct and a lot of things will happening same like blockchain uh, same like uh web one to web two you know web one there is uh dot com bubble first and then after that fair friendster is coming facebook is coming and now it's really big now yeah it's unstoppable but blockchain is same like that crypto is now it's the first wave is done they are gone because of luna and ftx you know they gone already now there is another blockchain coming with a new project good project impact project a lot of things that's what i believe so yeah, yeah blockchain can be a lot of things so, brilliant yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, a few minutes uh, before you move on. Um, so, do you mean to say that blockchain technology, as the basis of Web three, comes in response to hoax, unverifiable information in the you know Web one and Web two? So, information shared through internet in the future will be more reliable since it is verifiable. Do you mean yes. to say that? Right. Okay. Yeah, we can we can do that because uh, there's one company called. Weebly, Weebly in 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 France, they are creating their own blockchain, and they are doing uh, what I call it a content confirmation system using blockchain. So when we see that uh, the information is already on the chain, we know that this is valid. This is they can do that. You know, this is what I say. Blockchain is, you, you know, this is a joke. When you're talking about Revolution Industry 4.0, you're talking about augment, uh, you were talking about artificial intelligence, right? Big data, machine learning, IoT, and the last one is blockchain, right? Why blockchain in the last one? Because everything, the problem that we will have in this four technology will be solved by blockchain. Artificial intelligence, the problem is the proof of the data because AI will learn about the data. Blockchain needed for what? For make this data valid for machine learning, for IoT, the security. How about if we do IoT on every single traffic light and then suddenly some some hacker coming and say all right? Because we don't using decentralized network, and then blockchain is coming. Decentralized network is there, and when the uh, the tax is happening. Okay, make it right. The blockchain network is starting the smart contract. Is it real? Is it real? Okay, confirm, confirm, confirm. Oh no, not confirm. And then nothing is happening. This is the blockchain, how it works on IoT. On big data, our data will be safe. Why? Now my KTP is everywhere. Every single credit card is calling me now. To, you know, it's, it's really hard for me. Uh, that's why I'm saying that I, I need to control my KTP. I need to control my KTP. I need to know who the one that use my KTP. This is this is really important for me. Yeah, if they use only for credit card, okay. But how about they want to kill me? Something is it's happening, you know. So this is what I saying. This blockchain is the answer. Okay. So what we are doing in Baliola, we creating. Uh, we are doing a Baliola service. We have a service also the blockchain consultant development. We also helping a lot of company government to starting to move from web to web three. Uh, we have a platform they're developing. We developing problem to helping them and uh, yeah, we already have a quite a lot of client to as player to doing this. And if you guys want to know more about blockchain and how you implement on your business and everything, we also have Bali blockchain centers. Uh, this is the the laboratoriums that creating by the government of Denpasar. And in Indonesia, only the Den Denpasar government has this one. And we own the Dabanagara Alaya building. You can come here, we have 10 staff, uh, every working days you can discuss with us and how we implement the blockchain. You will know more about NFTs, you know more about cryptocurrency, you know more about blockchain. 
And also in Bali Blockchain Center, now we currently, we are creating our own blockchain, Bali Blockchain. We are creating our own network to uh, helping a lot of university and also government in Indonesia. So this is all from me uh, discussed. Maybe you have a question, please. That's really brilliant. Paanta, questions to Paanta, please. Yes, um, Eka Kurnia, I think you raise your hand virtually. Please, uh, your questions. Okay, uh, thank you for the time. Uh, blockchain is very interesting. Uh, I just want to know, uh, every technology has a, a simple simple analogy. It must be, can be hacked. Why is blockchain is so superior? Is uh, That's uh, Paantak say it's can to be hacked. Maybe I want to know it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the first one is, it's not can, it's difficult to hack. It's difficult to hack, it's really difficult because of what the structures of data on blockchain is based on block. One block is connecting to another block, to another block, to another block. If you change this block, you need to change the block that connected to this one. If you change the next con block, you will change another block too. If you change this one, you will need to change this one. So it took a lot of time to change one data on blockchain. That's for the block. The second one is when you do the manipulation for the block, the network, the consensus network will find out what is, what is the transaction? Is this the right transaction? If most of the consensus say, the server say, no, no, this is not right, uh, this is not right, Transaction. Okay, wait a minute. So it's it's difficult. You need a lot of stuff. You need a lot of computing power. You need a lot of you. You cannot like for example one hacker in one room. They want to hack a server. They can do it now on web two, right? In server, but on blockchain, you need a whole company with three hundred fifty hackers inside that company to hack only one blockchain at and you can do that, but the probability is really low. It's no guarantee for success. Because on the blockchain, there is one thing that you need to know. Blockchain is immutable. You cannot delay, you cannot edit. So even though you hack it and you, you want to change the manipulation, blockchain doesn't understand it. So what the point? If you, wanna, if, if you want to be, I mean, if, if, if you want to uh, be a hacker and want to hack a blockchain, you need to be first, you need to uh, be 51% of the server is belong to you. Yeah, and the consensus or smart contract, it must be code from you. And it's based on that you cannot do it. It's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. I, I cannot say can because it's still this technology is built from human. Some human will be hacked maybe next day, but until now, it's really difficult to change it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. There's another any, question. Any questions? Paanta, you, you talk a lot about NFT, um, you know, smart contract and everything. Uh, I, I think peer to peer lending is also you know, you know, using the blockchain technology, right? Yeah. Yeah. Peer to peer lending. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Imagine that you want to save your money in a bank and then, you know, your bank will give you an interest rate and your bank will lend your money and others to somebody who needs it, but you never know to whom, you know, the bank lends your money, money in and money out is recorded by your bank. So in other words, it is centralized. The bank never shares its recorded transactions, but now peer-to-peer -peer lending with the you know blockchain technology, you can lend your money to somebody that you know and who needs your, your money, right? There's no bank intervention. So it is decentralized, shared information and more transparent, like, like you always said. Another good thing is that you uh, you know you have a freedom to pick 
to whom the money should go and you can get higher interest rate because of the absence of the intermediary rule of, of the bank so it's a good news to me um you know to enjoy the advantage of, of, of the blockchain yeah <laughs> Virtual right. lending is one thing, and uh, on blockchain there is called it DeFi, decentralized finance. Yeah. The concept right. is is the same, but the implementation is different. Uh, we can talk maybe in the next time about DeFi. I will so deep down about DeFi. How DeFi have a five pillar, five pillars, and uh, there's this five. One is the decentralized finance. It's it's really different than our finance mechanisms, but um, there is a lot of uh, use case that we can use it, but we need another session to talking on only about DeFi. Excellent, Panta. Questions? A few more minutes left. Questions to Panta. This is really rare, you know, opportunity that we, you know, you know, have a great talk with an expert in this area. So, please use this opportunity to, you know talk with Panta. Yeah. Maybe you okay. can put chat also. So. Yeah, yeah, chat, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there is pa yeah. Wayan. Pa Wayan, please, pa Wayan, your questions. Straightforward. Please, pa Wayan. I think you need to unmute your speaker. Yeah. You need to unmute the speaker power. Yeah? Please. Is he gone? <laughs> but why are you are you still there? I think we are having you know okay. a problem there. Yes. Problem. Okay. There is another one. No problem. You can you can just type your questions in the chat menu, Pawayan. It's okay. It also accepted. It. It's acceptable. <laughs> Pawayan can Ta type your question, please. It's okay. Oh yeah, yeah. there's Pawayan. Oh Paika, there's Paika again. Okay. Yes, please, Paika. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, because we have a leader of blockchain in Bali. I just want to know. Uh, in in your first uh, slide, yeah, that's uh explain about hash in blockchain what is hash because in the block first block it has to a second block and then adds a different hash to a third third block what it has that's in the in your in the first slide maybe you can uh, show us what hash okay. is the code that generated cryptographically to uh giving identity for one block so this is like a number identity number for every single block so if you have a block, this block, they be creating the hash, the hash code. This hash code will be connected to the tail of another block. So it is like a uh, number KTP, you know, number KTP. This is like oh, number yeah, KTP yes, of yes, the block, yeah. just that. And oh, it's creating see. by the cryptographic mechanisms. You know, so they like, for example, like there is a formulation or a mathematic formulation they're creating the path, a crypto cryptographic hash, and then putting on the block. Okay, thank you. There is a hash. So it's like uh, you say, uh, no more KTP, yeah. different block will have a different ID. Yeah, yes. Okay. yes, absolutely. Okay. I think Pak Wayan already typed his question. Uh, can you please respond to Pak Wayan's question? Thank you. Okay, Chicago for friend. <clears throat> okay, there is about the energy of blockchain. So there is another, there is uh, several kind of consensus. Why they need a lot of your computer power? Because they need to creating the hash, what Paika said, the hash, they need to creating the hash. So there is two kinds of consensus. There is proof of work and proof of stake. This is the main consensus, proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of works to creating the hash, they you need to be mining something. 
in which you'll be creating the code. So this is the problem. To finding the code, you need to do it a looping mechanism to find the code. For example, you have a formula, blah, 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 times bakso is ayam. So you need to find the blah, 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 this one. So you change it. Okay, how about I put sapi? Is it ayam? No. Okay, I put uh, uh, buaya. Is it ayam? No. So they do it every single time. That's why if they do it like one second, like one thousandth, literation uh literary like that circling like that so that's why they need a lot of computational power this is proof of work you do mining to do that so that's why like bitcoin they you need a lot of computational power this is why there's no uh, china already banned bitcoin because of this one the the deficit energy you know but there is another proof of uh, there is another consensus they got proof of stake you don't need to do a computational power you just, okay, like for example, now Ethereum is already proof of stake. Before it's proof of work, but the, the Ethereum is already merger and changing. They are being now proof of stake. How proof of stake work is just like this. We say that every single 100 Ethereum, every single 10 Ethereum, you will have one vote. So you do the deposit of your Ethereum. For example, you deposit 30, so you have three vote. And then when you have three fold, the transaction is happening, then you do, the system will do randomly find who lottery will get to create the node first time. Because who create the node the first time, he get the most of the gas fee. Okay, so they don't need a lot of computational power. So most of the blockchain now, it's no need a lot of energy. I run my node in my house, you know, with a small amount of tech energy, a very, you know, computer, the computer is so ancient, I use it, but it's working. So you don't need to uh, thinking about the, what about the carbon and energy? Most of the blockchain is already changing to proof of stake. It's not proof of work anymore. Okay. There is Pak Wayan. Thank you, Panta. There's a question tied to in a chat menu. Can you please have yes. a look at it? Thank you. There is uh, Pa Kade, so uh, Bu Kade, sorry, Aningsi. Okay, this has been the relation between blockchain, crypto, and everything you do at the dark as platform for buying and selling digital asset. What is the difference between crypto obtained from mining on the blockchain and crypto purchase metric? The crypto from mining and the crypto from Indodex is the same. Nothing different. Indodex is just like a market. If you have a coin, you have a, you, for example, that you are mining, right? You mine it, you get Bitcoin, for example, you have one Bitcoin and, okay, I have Bitcoin, but I running my mine, my mining engine. So I need to pay uh, electricity, uh, internet, everything. I need to make rupiah, right? So you go to Indodex, sell your Bitcoin, and then you get rupiah. Basically, just like that. If you are miners or if you are a trading, Okay, there is an asset in Indodex. Indodex is only the market. Indodex, Coco Crypto, Dex, Binance, uh, Moonshine, a lot of exchange. Just want to, the, this is the place when you can buy the crypto asset. Is it the crypto asset the same between uh, exchange from and mining is the same. Every, it is the same, it's nothing different. Just the medium to get it is different. In the exchange, you just buy it. In the mining, you just mine it. So just like that. Okay. All this right. Great. Um, yeah. Um, I, one one question from me. Um, it's about the disadvantages of of this technology. Um, um, you know. Let's let's talk about the human or the social aspect, uh, you know, in, impacted by this technology. Um, it seems like the we don't need you know the middleman. We, we we always talk about that. You know, even we don't need banks in in peer to peer lending because of the smart contract and everything. Uh, we don't need even you know the, the tour guide that you 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 showed in your presentation. It's like 
we 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 just need to go to a, a tourism you know uh, area and then for some spots with with the technology we can just you know have a, we can we can watch a virtual tour guide explaining the what what the place is and everything so uh, you know should we be happy with this technology <laughs> or should be should be we should we be you know worried about our future <laughs> because because our rule soon will be replaced by this technology so should should we be happy or worried that's that's, that's my question thank you if i say it says we are worried to be happy <laughs> see we are worried to be happy because one thing we need to understand about web3 economy web3 economy is creator economy so every single people who can create something will get a lot of things on web3 so is it is we need to worry yeah we need to be worried if we are not creative enough we happy yeah we're happy because we will have a uh, underlying for all our art or our creation it will be great but it's based on what point of view we have you know this is what what i'm saying that this really need to be worried yes we need to be worried that's why i always say to all the people all the people you know the generation now is changing now there's alpha generation my kids is alpha generation i i always say always always say to them that you don't need to go to university. It's up to you. If you want to go to university to learn, learn. If uh, no, just only want to uh, something to do, just walk. Why you go to university? Okay. Because basically, uh, the creative economy is different. The creative economy is, is is different. You some now people don't need you having a lot of degree and getting a lot of money. For example, you know the. The guy that saying, "Kamu nanya, kamu nanya," you know how much money that he get? A lot, a lot of. Just only say, "Kamu nanya," you know. It's really crazy. This creator economy is really crazy. That's why I'm saying that. Despite of we are worried about this, why don't prepare yourself? There's something because even though that blockchain is not happening, new technology is coming because our civilization is going up every time. We, for example, like accountant, do you need an admin that understand accountant now? No, I just need admin. There is a software. Accountant is focused on strategic accounting, strategic finance. There is the need for the company, right? So it's changing already. We cannot say, okay, stop changing because I'm not ready. Come on, man. It's not work like that. If you are a guide and you wanted to be creative, you create your story. Come on. And Bali has a lot of story. Why did this, you just create the story and helping us? Because virtual guide that we creating is not to changing the guide, but helping the guide to creating their story. Because one thing is missing in tourism in Bali, there is storytelling. We don't have a great storytelling. Not like Japan, not like China, no, none like uh, Korea, they have a great storytelling for their cultures, but we, we have a lot of culture, a lot of story, a lot of everything, but no one creating a great package of the story. That's why we try to do that. So this is, uh, what I'm saying, but so it's focus on it. You need to be worried, happy. You just stop being worried. Just prepare ourselves because you know, we are here in Bali. We have a great advantage because all the global economy, global community is in Bali. Uh, people are love in Bali. We are so happy here. It's not like Jakarta. I don't know. Maybe some of you are live in Jakarta. Uh, I hate Jakarta, even though that I stay there for 15 years. And I say that I'm being a robot there. So I go back to Bali and I just happy that my industry, the centers is in Bali. So. That's starting because Bali is not a minority. We are the superiors now. We we need to be uh, we need to be in this technology, not only like watching people happening here. Like for example, like Google and Facebook, we cannot run to them and we 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 cannot compete to them because they are already big. 
but blockchain, crypto, NFT, they're not big yet, and it's decentralized. For fee- before that you want to create and be in, 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 in IT business, you want to create uh, data centers, you need a lot of money, for example, like 100 milliards rupiah to create one data center, right? But in blockchain, you just need one node and you be a data center. It is like collectively, everyone can do it. I, I do it with only like 2 million rupiah, then I have one node. Just as simple as that. And, and that node is mining. I'm, 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 like for example, me explaining to you about blockchain, my node is getting money. <laughs> this is like that. So this is how it works. So I would say we need to be prepared. That's why uh, in Bali Blockchain Center, we always say to the people, we, on, we, we, we also creating now, we already have a agreement with 13 university in Bali. And two of them is already agreed to create CBC, Campus Blockchain Club, to the university student for the uh, bachelor degree student. So we are now talking with them to creating a club, blockchain, blockchain club, you know, for they to understand about blockchain. They create their own token, maybe in the campus. They create their own economy. It can be like a economic simulation, you know. For example, like, like Pak Putu, you want to explain about monetary system? Why do you create token and you as a BI, a central bank, and try to simulate how the money works by that one? And it's easy to do that. And you can explain monetary system so easy with that. So blockchain can be your tools for education, right? So this is what I say. What a great talk, Paanta. That's, <laughs> you know, what can I say to conclude this, uh, you know, excellent meeting. So um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have, um, we have talked a lot with Anta and then we have seen um, his excellent presentation. That's brilliant and very inspiring. And we should be proud that, you know, the center of, you know, the blockchain community is located in Bali and we have to take such advantages, uh, you know, you know, because we live, I believe everyone joining this meeting, you know, live in, in, in Bali. So uh, please visit Bali Blockchain Center and talk more with Paanta over there. And Paanta will be very pleased to, uh, yeah, to uh, welcome you. Paanta, again, this is an excellent talk. Very, very My inspiring. Pleasure. My pleasure. You know, Thank you. Um, hopefully we meet you know, not online, but face to face. And we welcome you, you know, at our lovely campus. And um, so everyone, thank you for joining us. And Paanta, thank you again. And um, have a good night. Have a good night, Take care, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say that um, this video is recorded and i will share this video on my youtube channel so don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> sure <A bit> <laughs> thank you thank you again. once again and a good night everyone thank you thank bye you. thank you bye, bye. thank you sir bye